Elon, if you're really not afraid of hell, prove it. Well, good on you folks. Welcome to the Virtue Signal. I'm Alfonso Rich with my cohort, Bill Whittle. And our job is to get out there and fight perverted views of virtue. That's what we do. And thank you guys for tuning in for it. And we appreciate your support. Uh, Bill, man, I saw this one. This, this was uh, kind of heartbreaking, man. I, uh, oh boy. I caught up with this, uh, but hopefully we could still have some kind of fun with it. But um, I saw this tweet and it came out from, from Elon Musk and it, it was a response of him saying, um, I'm okay with going to hell. I'm okay with going to hell if that's where I'm destined to go. Uh, it's okay, most of, uh, most of humanity is gonna be there anyway, right? Mm -hmm. now, um, now, if a person isn't a believer, that's, 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 their, that's their prerogative, right? It doesn't mean that it's not heart, heart-wrenching in the sense of, it's like a person saying, I'm proud of my abortion. Hey, I shout my abortion. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's exactly what it is. Right? You know, it's like, and, and I, I do it over again, over and over. I do it a hundred times. We got people out there saying, oh, I, I do, do it, it recreationally. I wish I could yeah. get pregnant more often so I could have more abortions. Right. So, there are Pe people that actually say that. Yes. people are, And people out there are saying that they're proud of their transition. Parents out there talking about being proud of their kids' transition. Parents- At four. Yeah, at, at four. Before they're even to talk, proud of saying, my kid is trans. Y your mm -hmm. kid is still in diapers. You know, or my, yep. you know, so it's, it's, it's like hearing that kind of thing. And so now for, for, for some, I get it. You know, they, they, they really don't, they, they, they would love for, for religion, you know, to be uh, separate from the discourse. Don't involve your religion with policies in, 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 in a way. I, I mean, that's kind of like barking up the wrong tree as far as I'm concerned, uh, because I don't follow religion. I follow Jesus. And I don't think it's a good idea for me to go into discourse without some sort of fundamental. What do you want me to go in there with my virtue? Mm -hmm. Our virtues is what got us into this problem. There needs to be a foundation. So that's one of the reasons why, yeah, I, if we're going to be talking about virtues, I have to have a filter. I need a foundation to go from. I don't want to make the mistake of assuming that my virtues and my ideas of it are going to be the fix. Cause that's kind of how we got into this problem. But looking at with, with Elon Musk saying what he says, I mean, Bill, the, the part of the heartache is, is the arrogance of the statement, the pride that drives the statement. It's like, dude, look at what you've been able to accomplish. I mean, there's things that we've been, we spent our lives trying to accomplish, man. And we barely even scratched the surface, man. You're out there scratching the surface of orbit. All right. <laughs> you're going beyond that. Look what you've been able to do. You are blessed. You, you've been given a gift to cultivate, to nurture, to develop. And, and you're running with it, man. And it's amazing. And you don't have the sense of gratitude to say, hey, thank you. Rather, instead, you give a finger to God and say, you know what? I'm okay with going to the other place. That, well, first of all, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. But just the pride mm -hmm. that, that, that oozes from that, you know, the arrogance of it. It's like, wow, man, that's, that's really sad. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the, is the total disbelief in it. Because mm. if you really believed in hell, mm. you'd never say anything like that. Mm. Right? I mean, if you really believed that hell existed, you would never say, I'm perfectly fine with going to hell. Mm. The fact that he can say something like that means he doesn't believe in a hell, doesn't believe in a heaven, undoubtedly. Mm. And I, I don't know for sure, but I suspect he doesn't believe in God and all the rest of it. Mm. Uh, let me just say one thing about Elon Musk, because I lionize him a lot mm. and... Uh, and and I think this is an important point. He's kind of like, you know, Elon Musk is a bit like Ukraine. I'm on his side generally. I don't like everything about him. And there are things about him that I, that I just completely disagree with. But frankly, I think we're more or less on the same team. Now, Elon Musk said he would pay for abortions for people, to staff members to go from one state to another to get an abortion. That's not a position I agree with. And a lot of people bring that up and say, see, he's not a conservative. Mm. And this, all, this, all of this to say one thing only. Everybody in, in the world is, a, is essentially, when you get down to it, everybody's a political party of one, right? Everybody has something different about what they believe and what they want to believe. Most of the big things we all agree on or half of us agree on. But nobody, no two people agree on absolutely everything. Right. No two people.
Even if they're all the way down to the fact that they're both Bears fans, they could have an argument about who is the best, you know, linebacker in, in Chicago history. So, it, so nobody is ever the same. And that's something, you know, that, that makes humanity miraculous. So when Elon Musk says something like this or, 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 or the uh, I'll pay for people to go get abortions. Yes, it, I, I certainly don't agree with that. But that doesn't mean he's dead to me. Right. right. It means that this guy and I agree on seven out of 10 things. OK, uh, he's the only billionaire that I'm aware of that has that high a percentage. So as far as I'm concerned, he, he's he's worth what he uh, on balance. Somebody who's got enough money to buy free speech is is OK in my book for the time being anyway. So now with that out of the way, I think what I would say uh, about Elon Musk is is something that somebody said to me. And I mean within the first year of me writing Eject, Eject, Eject. Uh, I was an atheist for most of my life, a real materialist and, and all of that stuff. And, and I knew that, you know, hey, we took hydrogen, helium, methane, ammonia, passed a spark through it like a, like a lightning bolt and out dribbled the amino acids. Therefore, you know, QED, there's no God because you don't need him. This was, this was the kind of pride and arrogance that you're talking about, this idea that, okay, so we, we see how some of these things work. But we don't know why they work. We can we can talk about how they work, but we don't know why. Uh, I've been I'm looking forward to doing a series of, of videos on on this subject. Uh, a guy I'm getting to know rather well is a, a really brilliant computer uh, a genius. Helped design the internet basically, and and he is a um, he talks about biophilia. He, he loves life in all of its forms, and he loves it because the complexity of life is miraculous to him. And, and he knows it on, a, on an extremely advanced scientific level. You know, millions of proteins folding in, you know, a tenth of a second and, and, and arranging themselves into, into shapes that, that just the, the, the complexity of it is inconceivable. And when, when he hears people say, oh, well, we, know how, we understand how life works, he says, no, you don't. No, you don't. You, 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 understand, you understand the process and you understand the outcomes, but you don't understand how it works. You, you, can, you can make predictions, but, but, the, but what's actually going on is so astonishingly complex and so astonishingly deep that to say that you know it is the same as me pointing to a map on the wall and saying, see, that's Texas. That's not Texas. Texas is, is, is hundreds of thousands of square miles of, of, of pebbles with bacteria on them, right? That's Texas. This is a drawing of something. It's useful. These little lines here will show me how to get to one place in Texas to another. And the more detailed the map is, the more, the more detail I can get out of it. But the map isn't the territory. And, and, and so to answer what I said a second ago when I started off on this rant, I'd been writing it eject, eject, eject for about a year, and I was talking about this, this kind of thing. And, um, and somebody wrote me and said, uh, Bill, I, I suspect maybe your journey is not over yet. And, and that comment filled me with rage, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it just filled me with rage. Honestly, it really made me angry. Who are you to tell me? Well, apparently, it was somebody who had, who had stopped at the same rest station that I was on at the time, right? And it kept on going. And, um, and probably was assuming, hey, you know, if you keep on going, you might end up in a different place too. So all of this to say that he's not done yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think certainly he's changing. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the more flack he gets from the people. So one of the things that, that, that made me so much more uh, spiritual than I used to be was just simple practical day-to-day -day experience. Mm -hmm. I found out to my um, astonishment at the time, although now it doesn't seem so astonishing at all, that all the best people I knew were Christians and all the worst people I knew were not. And, and over time, that'll have an effect on you. Indeed. because you And you are a significant part of that, by the way. Uh, right on, man. That's, a, that's an honor, man. And uh, 
you know, I, I, I hope to get a, a, a merit badge from uh, from on high. That alone is going to get you into heaven, man. You do whatever you want to from this point. You you got the golden ticket. <laughs> it's like you made a good impression for me for Bill. It's like, yeah, 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 get, right. get, hey, <laughs> get in there, you knucklehead, drug using, womanizing, <laughs> blasphemer. <laughs> You, you little noogie. Yeah, it, and I can sympathize, man, because, you know, I was there myself, you know, as a, uh, you know, agnostic, you know, born, I, I wasn't full atheist, but, you know, I was on my way. And, uh, and it's like you said, you know, to, to those um, who are reluctant, I say to them, you know, as, as I'm, I'm like, you, do you really want to be on the same frequency on these people? Look at who hates you. I mean, vitriolic, nasty, nasty hate that they have. And these people are godless. And as the Lord says, they hated me first. The world, not just the people, the world, the cosmos. That's 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 the word in, in, for, for worlds, the cosmos, all of it hates me. Right. And there's it's a long story of, of why that is. But it gets down to it's like they hated me first, man. So trust me, I do understand. And you, you, you mentioned about, you know, going into how these things work. I think it's interesting in the word is that it, it's more it. You got, you got a lot of people who only look at the creation aspect of it. And it's it's deeper than that. You got to read the whole word of God to find out what that those six days actually implicate. It's a whole nother thing. But I'll shorten it up by saying this. You go deeper into the word and it doesn't just tell you that God snapped his finger and created the universe. It says that God laid the foundations of the universe. So when you want to break all this stuff down to the elemental level, when you want to get down to the physics of it and who authored the law of it, because it's a law, right? Well, a law has to have an author. And you look at the intricacies of this and you see that, dude, there is no way that this could be an accident. Somebody, uh, I was looking in the, um, the Twitter feed of Elon Musk and, and somebody's talking about, uh, it's 2022 and you people believe that a virgin gave birth to a baby. And I'm like, you think that's ridiculous? You think that this whole universe came from nothing. That is a birth that sounds ridiculous to me. There was an initiator. There was a design to it. It was, if you want to call it the Big Bang, well, it was a controlled flipping explosion. All right. So we can go, even in, even the word of God tells us that the Lord spreads out the heavens like a tent, right? Well, a, a, the tent has to start in a compressed state and it's still spreading, right? It's still, it's written in a present tense as if it's still expanding. So, and all the, and the implications that go into that, as you mentioned before, it's not just explaining the how. And that's that's one of the things that I saw. I've seen, you know, people have conversations with Elon and, and try to bring up faith with him. And Elon has brought up kind of like scoffing like questions. Well, you know, I don't see the point of, you know, like Jesus making a whole bunch of fish or, you know, Jonah in the whale. It's like, I don't see the point in it. And I don't understand how that happens. And if you can't explain the how, then I don't believe it. Well, as we've talked about before, it's illogical to explain, to give a natural explanation of something supernatural. It's not about the how. It's the why. Why did he do that? Now, this, the, the historical narrative is, is written. It's written in stone. It's a thing that happened. Th there's testimony to it. And once again, if people don't want to believe it, that's a whole nother thing. But it doesn't mean that there's not a record of it. And it's with a lot. Of, and, and, and just like you said, Bill, it's because of what a lot of people do that gives me pause. It makes me think, okay, maybe this guy isn't lying to me. I can't just go around believing that, well, you know, Jesus was a nice guy and he was a, you know, he taught some good stuff. I can't believe that Jesus was a nice guy if he was a liar, right? So, and the record is written about him. And we see people today who are looking at just absolute truth. It's like, dude, this is absolutely true. And you're denying that. And there's no excuse for you to. And Jesus said, yeah, people are going to do that. <laughs> They're going to look right at the truth. Right. As you know, it's like I've said before, a lot of people, they wouldn't know the truth if it died for them, you know, mm -hmm. and that's <laughs> and Jesus is like telling them, yeah, people are going to do that. They're going to look right at the truth and reject it. I'd like to talk to Elon, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for, for a number of reasons, but I, I'd like to talk to him about this because when he says something like, well, I don't I don't believe that's possible. So therefore, I don't believe in it because it's mm -hmm. not possible. Elon Musk has said he wants to die on Mars and famously said he just prefer if it wasn't on landing, which to me is the <laughs> essence of the man. I love that line. <laughs> but he also has said that in order to do this, it's going to require 5,000 launches. 5,000, I think, is the number of, of Starship launches. It's at least 1,000. I think it was five. And, and my first thought when Elon says, well, you know, it, it just, it, this is not possible. And 
I, I don't believe it. My first thought would be 5,000 launches, Elon, was inconceivable three, five years ago. Inconceivable. But now it seems automatic. seems like it's absolutely going to happen because you made it happen. Mm. Because you didn't. Because you didn't see the impossibility of it. Elon Musk's design now, the design of the rocket, the design of the launch pad, all of this stuff is to, is to catch the booster, stack a new top on it. He says he can cycle a rocket in an hour. Mm. That's the goal. That's how, that's how much stuff you got to get up there. Now, none of that existed. I've, I've been a space kid. I'm an I'm, I'm a Apollo 11 kind of go-to guy. Mm. And the idea that, that it would take that much lift capacity mm. – Never was discussed among anybody because it is impossible, mm. right? It's impossible to get 5,000 launches or whatever you need to get a full-grown colony on Mars and stay there. It's impossible. 5,000 launches? That's insane. I don't think there's been 5,000 launches since the space program started. <laughs> but Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. So if it takes 5,000 launches, then that's what we're going to have to do. And, and, and the, the point I would be trying to make to Elon and the point I'm trying to make here is – what was impossible became possible because your will manifested it. Mm. You made something that was not there before because you decided to do it. And, and so how is any of this different? You know, certainly you can't believe that, 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 that this little cantaloupe of gray jelly, you know, it's put together out of proteins. And stuff. <laughs> it's a remarkable design. Don't get me wrong. It's the fastest. I'm learning so much from this new friend of mine. The corpus callosum that connects the two hemispheres of the brain is by far, by far, by far the fastest data network on the planet and the most complex by orders of magnitude. So surely you can, you can see that, that uh, a parakeet is not capable of designing a starship, mm. right? You know what I mean? We can all agree on that, right? And it doesn't matter how long you train the parakeet. It doesn't matter how many times you teach it about aerodynamics or thermodynamics or any of that stuff. Parakeet's not going to get it. Chimp's not going to get it. Chimp is never going to understand specific impulse. I'm just barely better than a chimp, and I barely understand specific impulse. But my point is this. If you think that this is all there is, then, then that's not a scientific view. Mm. It, it, your entire idea of evolution, especially this idea of panspermia, which is the idea that life is everywhere, that these molecules and proteins exist, there's a pretty compelling theory that says that, that the progenitors of life, at least, were brought to the Earth on comets, bombarding the Earth in the early days of the solar system. But put all that aside. If you follow the science and, and the, the practical, hard-nosed uh, astrophysics, astrophysics of it, Mr. Musk – then you know that with a, with a galaxy with 200 billion stars and another 200 billion galaxies, each with 200 billion stars, the chances of what happened here being absolutely unique are, are zero, right? So what you're saying is, is that you with your brain now is as good as it gets. There's nothing beyond this. There's no levels of understanding beyond where you are now and Dawkins is now, right? This is the absolute limit, not, not just the limit of human intellect. Mm. This, is the, this is the limit of universal intellect. We have all the answers. We understand how everything works. QED, there is no God because we got it all figured out. But you don't. Mm. You don't. And, and, you're in, and the entire theory of, of evolution essentially says that that there that 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 the brain developed as a result of well there was it was intelligence was selected for okay so natural selection explains evolution but it doesn't explain biology you know this is again something i'm learning from this guy natural selection yes you can say that this 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 device and this device put in this environment this one will be favored because it's got this kind of gear set on it okay it doesn't tell you anything about how the device actually works. Mm -hmm. and, and when you get into the, 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 the mind-boggling complexity of it, and let me just go back just quickly. I know I'm uh, dominating this, but let's just go back to this idea of the Big Bang for a second. So, look, I, I used to teach this stuff, mm -hmm. and I understand it to the degree that a parakeet can understand, you know, thermodynamics, I understand it. But essentially, 
the reason we are able to do what we do, and we do amazing things with this little lump of jelly, amazing things. We should be proud of ourselves. But basically what happens is you look at the universe out there now, you take all this data, you say, okay, it's expanding, it's doing all this. Okay, so let's just run the clock backwards. What happens? Well, okay, and then well, now we're at the density where this would have to happen and this would have to happen and all this stuff. And you can run it back, and they have run it back so to something like the first point zero 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 one second mm -hmm. after the bang. They know what the universe looked like, and I believe that's probably pretty accurate. But they don't know what it looked like at the moment, and they don't know what it looked like before, because I think before is, is, is parakeet thinking. But my point is this. If the Big Bang is an explosion, right, for something to be an explosion, it has to be contained, mm -hmm. right? The difference between a gasoline fire and a gasoline bomb is that the bomb is contained, mm -hmm. And when the pressure inside builds up enough to break the containment, then you have an explosion. So my question is, what contained this thing? Mm -hmm. What contained it? Well, it was, see, this is what I'm talking about when I get, I call this the horsepower limit. There are things that are, that, there are things that we can reason. And again, I'm exceedingly proud of these things. We can reason using symbols and math and, and, and analogies and all this other stuff and get an astonishingly good idea of, of what the universe looks like and how it works. But that doesn't mean we understand it. It just means we know how to describe it, and we can, and we can do some prediction. People, human beings, no matter what they say, cannot understand infinity, and they cannot understand eternity. They can deal with them as abstract concepts, but they can't understand them. They just simply can't understand them because we don't have the horsepower for it. But just because we don't doesn't mean somebody else doesn't. And if our ability to look at something on a quantum level changes the outcome, then that means that the more complex the observer is, the more control over the quantum state that person has. And if you had a person with a godlike intellect, I imagine that person could simply think things into existence. That's what quantum theory tells me. Indeed, man. And you know, the thing is, <clears throat> what you mentioned is, is right out of the word itself. It says, yeah, basically, you may know, you know, the season and you, you, you can get down into, uh, you know, the, the, how a plant grows, but you don't really know what makes it grow. Right. And, and, and the word and the word of God doesn't work like a mythology in, in saying like, you know, uh, there was uh, uh, you had this instance with Demeter or and, and Persephone. And that's why you have, you know, spring or in summer and, and, and these seasons and stuff like that, because Hades had a hissy fit and wants his wife back and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. God doesn't tell you that. It's like, look, man, this is how this is the season and this time for plants to grow. You don't know how it grows. You can go ahead. That's and, right. You, you, you can get down to the science of how to, to maintain you know, and, and favorable times of plant and planting and stuff like that. Sure, you can do that, but you don't really know what makes it grow. Well, that's, that's right. where I come in. I'm the unseen. It's just like you said about eternity. You can't comprehend eternity. That's why the Lord refers to himself as the unseen. You can't put your mind around eternity. It's a brain buster, right? He's always been here. All, he's the uncreated. And, you know, that's why, you know, uh, I get in trouble with people who really believe the creation narrative. I'm like, it's not like God didn't have the time. All right. <laughs> like I said, like I said, he laid the foundations of the universe. All this stuff is an intricate work that he demonstrates in the natural. Right. He's the first technician. Right. When we say technology, we're talking about something created skillfully by hand. He's the first of it. Right. So that's it. And, and you can see how the skies uh, proclaim his handiwork. So. It's, it's just sad, you know, that it's, and I, and I'm guilty of this too. It's like one of those things where it's like, man, it's, it's just, it's kind of lazy where I've seen people. It's exactly yeah, the word. It's, it's lazy. It's, uh, and, but, but all the work that people go through to not believe it, it's that kind of thing where it's like, okay, so why, why don't you believe in the Bible? Cause I don't believe in some man made book or man made religion. I'm like, that's illogical. That doesn't make any sense because you're believing the man made writings of this person and you're holding that to be your gospel. And if you don't believe in something that's man written, why are you believing yourself? <laughs> so it's like, it doesn't make yeah, any that's sense. Right. No, that's right. So the, the Bible itself, yes, it's recorded by witnesses. It's not written by man. It's recorded by witnesses. It has an author to it. It's just, it, it's, it's one of those things, Bill. And I know this sounds really esoteric. If you read the, the Bible itself, it breathes different. 
the cadence of it, the pace of it when you read it. Any extra biblical book, you can tell that it's not canonical because it, it the, the rhythm of it reads differently. And what's fascinating about that's this- That's why it's so different from the Quran, and that's why you can yes. actually read the Bible. The Quran is unreadable. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, you can interpret it, mm. But it, but there's no, there's no narrative flows and story. It's not, it's not something like you know the prodigal son or something. There's no, there's no, there's no narrative flow to it. It's just a series of instructions, like the right. Code. It's, it's well, it's it's a it's a manual. It's a manual of death. It's a manual. It's not a novel. Right. It's a manual. It's a, ma yeah. it's a manual of death, and it, it claims, but it uses the even the Bible to validate itself. And I'm like, well, why not just believe the Bible itself instead of creating another narrative? If this is yeah. the Bible that you're going to justify and square it by, then just do that. But it breathes different. I mean, I don't, it's in the fascinating thing about the fascinating rhythm is that over the course of thousands of years by different authors, they write this book, but just somehow it doesn't necessarily. And you can you can detect their styles. You can detect their experience and stuff like that. But for some but reason, the pieces fit. The pieces fit, and it breathes the same. Why? Because it's just one author, you know. And the Bible itself is a manual of life, as opposed to the Al Quran is a manual of it because Al Quran doesn't deal with the death issue. You can see in Al Quran because Al Quran says that uh, death, uh, uh, there is no high tower that death can't reach, as opposed to where the Bible says that the Lord is my strong tower. And the Lord himself is the conqueror of death. The Bible deals with the death issue. El Quran does not. But that brings me to like what Elon Musk is talking about, you know, when he's when he's so cavalier in saying that he doesn't fear hell. And it's like, OK, so you want proof, I guess. Um, and it's one of those things where you'd actually have to prove that you want proof because people say they want proof and they really don't want it at all. But it's like, Elon, if you're really not afraid of hell, prove it. Take all that money that you got set it on fire and go roll around in it. That would don't be- Don't do that. Yeah, don't, no. He would, I, I think he would be smart. I'm joking, man. No, I'm joking. I, You're absolutely right. I don't want him to do that either. I, I don't want him to go to hell. I don't want anybody to go to hell. But it's like, if you're really not afraid of going to hell, well, I mean, and, and all the money that you got, Elon, wouldn't even make enough of a fire to compare to hell. You might as well take an e-cigarette and hold that up to our tourists. You're not going to get the same effect. You don't- you know, and, and what's so sad about that, Bill, is because, like I said earlier, for all that he has gained to go out there and it, it's emboldened. It's a big stumbling block because it emboldens people. So look what look what Elon's been able to accomplish. And he did it without God. Why do I need God? And now it emboldens a, no, a, a, a bigger population of people to get out there and curse Elon and curse people like you and curse people like me and people out there out there in front of uh, churches and stuff like that, parading around naked, celebrating their abortion. These people are driven by demons. Well, it's like, thanks, Elon. I mean, don't get me wrong. You've become the social media messiah and people are, are appreciative of that. And you've done a good thing. I do. And that's all the more reason why I just want to say, hey, man. I hope sure. you examine the truth. Not trying to judge you, not trying to say, hey, you're out of here. You know, I don't want to have anything to do with you. But with what you got, man, you did that? Wow. You know, um, I, I just go back to what I said at the beginning, and that is that uh, of all the billionaires out there, I know, I've known several millionaires, and they're great people. If, you, if you're clever and hardworking and disciplined, and you're willing to start your own business, practically impossible not to be a millionaire in this country, I think sometimes, you know. But billionaires are different. They, they really are different. And of all the billionaires out there, Elon Musk is the only one I've ever encountered that has a sense of fun. <laughs> right? And that means he's got some kind of spark of, of, of emotional truth inside him. And I would just hope, and, and to be perfectly honest with you, Zoe, I also expect that the advice that was given to me is going to apply to him. He's not finished yet. Mm. He's got. He's not finished his journey yet. Somebody once said, "You know, your opinion is 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 what you have at the point where you stopped thinking," and I thought oh, that's that's kind of interesting too. Um, if you're going to reach people like this, you have to reach them with with science. You have to you have to show them through science how how little we know. And, and, and I'm just going to close with one thing because you gave me a theological thought, as you always do, and it never occurred to me before. You were talking about uh, God didn't, you know, wasn't like he was short on time. And I thought, well, why did God make the universe in seven days then? And, and you know what the answer? And I'm not being, I'm not trying, certainly not trying to be blasphemous here. The thought occurred to me that the reason he did it in seven days was because he had to ship the product. <laughs> think about that. No, but think about that for a second. 
if he, if, if he had had an eternity, if he had given himself an eternity, at what point would it have ever stopped? Right? At what point would it have ever been finished, mm. uh, released? When? Right. What? You know? You, you, any work of art, and God knows I know this from having, you know, spent hours on individual frames of animation. You can, you can continually improve every single frame of every single pr uh, movie out there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in the end, you don't have a movie. Yeah, the endless tweaking, right? You've got to ship it, man. Yeah. Well, exactly. well the Lord, he, he already established that in those six days, you know, and then concluding on the seventh. I'm not, I'm not saying he didn't make it perfectly. What I'm saying is if he'd had another week, mm -hmm. What what other wonders would be here? Which makes you think, well, if you had what if you had another month? What if you had another year? What if you had another ten thousand years? Right? Well, there comes a point where this thing is finished. Exactly. I've made that it's done. Yes, yeah, and but but the, fortunately, the Lord did report of that. He go, he goes through the uh, um, the uh, chronology of the it. The assembly and it's in assembly is here's the assembly instructions. Here's here's how I did it. And says this is good. And at the end of it, he says it is very good. And he rested on that day. All it, done. It's Ship all it. He's like no more tweaking needed. And it, it was a it was a cosmic declaration to to know what this seventh day implies. That way, when the Lord goes to that cross and says, it is finished, there's no more that needs to be done to perfect right. your atonement. It's done. Right. Right. So it's complete. It's complete. Um, now, all that all, all that aside, uh, and, and I don't say that, you know, uh, dismissively or anything like that, um, because, man, when it comes to that narrative, I could I could go all day and I say that to stop myself. Um, I got a question because you mentioned that you teach this. And I know that you have a fascination with the Big Bang, and I'm, I'm hoping that this can be uh, answered like pretty quick. Um, oh, only only because of time constraints, not because I couldn't sit and listen to it. Um, the Big Bang was it? Did it? Did, was the Big Bang faster than the speed of light? The short answer is that the speed of light is the limiting velocity within the matrix of space time. So the Big Bang can expand much faster than the speed of light, mm. but light inside the bubble can't move faster than the speed of light. Mm. Although you can also consider, if you consider space time, space time is a, is a fabric and people don't know how to make sense out of that. Uh, the, the, the kind of the three dimensional gravity wells you see sometimes. And, and if you look down on a, like a, you know, they've got these museums, like the one I worked in, they've got like a, you know, like a, giant funnel and you just push a ball around and it, and it just goes and it'll accelerate and slow down accelerate and slow down look at it directly from above it's exactly what an orbit looks like but it's not there is no gravity it's just there's gravity <laughs> anyway <laughs> anyway my point is no the the the, the speed limit is in, is the speed of light is not constant we talk about 186,262 miles a second in a vacuum but when, but when light enters the atmosphere, light slows down. And when light enters water, light slows down a lot, which is why things look displaced in water. Sure. Because the light is slowing down as it enters a denser medium. So the speed of light is, is simply the, the, the speed of, of photons through what we call a vacuum, but which is in fact a matrix. And if you could thin that matrix out, the speed of light would increase in the same way that it decreases when you run it through something denser. That's that's a strange thing though, but I mean, because I think the popular consensus is that uh, photons themselves don't have any um, mass. Map. So how could even anything like air obstruct it? Like you know, put friction on it. Precisely. To... Yeah. Precisely. Why isn't it instantaneous? Hmm. And by the way, the speed of light is incredibly fast. If you're sitting here on Earth, it goes around the Earth seven times a second. But it takes a second and a half to get to the moon. And I've seen some astonishing animations that just show. Uh, it, it's just like this. Here's a circle. Here's the Earth. Here's the Moon, and it's just, and it's just a dot that goes doing, 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 mm -hmm. doing, 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 doing. That's the speed of light. Mm. The speed of light is actually astonishingly slow. It's really slow. Yeah. You, you know, you think Star Trek was well, like we just left the surface of the Sun. How long to get to Earth? Eight minutes. Mm. Eight and a half minutes. <laughs> One thousand. Two thousand. Mm. Three thousand. Let's move it along here. 
Yes, yes, and, and 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 now that 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 gives me some perspective when you when you say that the uh, the space itself expanding faster than the speed of light because it makes me wonder if you got a black hole and it makes me wonder about you know if if uh, photons they don't have a, a, a mass that we know of it must mean they don't have this mass that we know of because how could it be is is it that this uh, these photons are compressed to a point that they do have mass where they can get sucked into a black hole and if they can get sucked into a black hole. Well, the black hole is supposed is reported to have emissions. It emits. It, it, there's so what is coming out of a black hole that has enough escape velocity to get away from it? It must be faster how does, than light. How does light? How does light get trapped in a black hole when light has no mass and therefore is not is not uh, affected by gravity? Right. Mm. If you don't have mass, gravity doesn't affect you. Black hole is a highly concentrated gravitational source. So how is it that light can be captured in a black hole, which is why we call it a black hole in the first place? Mm. Well, this is this is where. This is back – now we're back with, with the map of Texas versus Texas. Mm. Light is not trapped by the gravity of the black hole. This matrix of space-time is warped by it. Mm. And the, the, the photon is now moving, presumably at the speed of light, but it is moving in, in space-time that is so highly curved that even though it's not being affected by gravity, gravity is affecting the matrix that it moves in. So now it's essentially moving within the confines of this – of this black hole. Now, this is just you know thumbnail astronomy. This kind of thing just kind of pick up for fun over the course of uh, sixty years or so. But it's just another example of of us of us not understanding the limitations of our astonishing ability to to understand things. We really are astonishingly good at understanding things, but we only understand them on a, on a, on on the map level. We don't we we think that because we can. Because we can observe and predict that we understand it, that that's, those are not the same things. Mm -hmm. uh, we we have we have we have the shadows on the back of the wall of the cave, right? And that's the world we live in. And if you don't understand that, then not only are you not going to progress spiritually, you're also not going to progress scientifically. The, the 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 first thing, the first part of wisdom is standing in open mouth, slack jawed amazement at the number of things that you don't know. Indeed, man. And and, and just lastly, uh, before we sign out, uh, folks, it's not about not appreciating science, not wanting to study science or anything like that. I study the all science. I can see these things. I see how they work. And I marvel, I marvel at the engineer of it. This stuff was engineered. That's all we're saying. It's not saying that this stuff happened like by some sort of hocus pocus or magic or anything like that. It was engineered, divine engineering. And that's what I want. And I hopefully Elon, you know, and anybody else out there who kind of on the fence about that stuff, hope you just take that into consideration. All right, y'all. We're Bill Whittle. I'm Alfonso Rachel. Thank you so much for tuning in to Virtue Signal. Work that share button. Visit BillWhittle.com. All right. Good night.